Hey everyone, this is part three, and we're going to generate the sum of elements. So, write a function called compute sum of all elements. Now with that, I am going to go grab that name, and literally just pop it in immediately. Function, get sum of all elements. So at least, if nothing else, I've spelled the function correctly. Given an array of numbers, so numbers, and some people really like to do this. They like to kind of build the function piece by piece, but you might want to avoid doing anything other than naming the function and naming the parameters or, param or parameter uh, before you read the entire problem. So given an array of numbers, compute sum of all elements returns the sum of all the elements in the given array. If the input array is empty, your function should return zero. So here's our edge case, which I usually like to copy and put in pseudocode there. And we'll define our input. So input is an array of numbers. If array input array is empty, your function should return zero. So I'm going to sort out my edge case first because I like to do that. I can tell an array is empty by checking its length. And I'm going to assume that it's only getting an array inside. Uh, so we'll assume that numbers wasn't accidentally passed as like a string or something. So numbers.length is, oh, back up. Numbers.length is equal to zero. Your function should return zero. So I'm going to say return zero. Now is when I need to consider what the uh, you know, accumulator, the result is going to be. So it would be something like create a sum variable set to zero, and then return sum variable. So if that's the case, now I want to consider how I'm going to iterate. So I'm going to iterate over numbers using for loop. And now I want to consider how I'm going to affect the uh, accumulator, which in this case is a sum variable, for each uh, portion of the iteration. Now what I would say is that we want to reassign sum to be sum plus current value. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and put some code in here. First is gonna be sum is equal to zero. We missed a step. Let's go ahead and grab our test cases. And the reason that we're gonna write our test cases in here before we start coding is because we want to minimize the amount of time between when we stop coding and when we start debugging. So if you write code and then have to write your test cases, especially if you're not just copying and pasting them, there's enough of a gap between when you had the variables and the actual code in mind to when you found out that it was incorrect, such that on an interview, it might not be as ideal as the version where you run the code, it's wrong, and you're right back into coding and messing with the variables that you had just determined or written. Sometimes the last words you say in a sentence while you're talking live are just not the words you were going for, but it's okay. So let's keep determining. We'll turn our sum. Iterate over the numbers using a for loop. So variable i is equal to zero. It's like, man, I read a lot of for loops. And it's like, yeah, you sure do. But by the end of this, you'll be quite well versed in them. So uh, variable i is equal to zero. i is less than numbers.length, i plus plus. So now I want to reassign sum to be sum plus current value. So there's a couple ways to write this. One is sum is equal to sum plus, And then the current value is just numbers at i. The other version of this, of course, is sum plus equals i. Both of those mean the exact same thing. I'm going to leave it as this because it's a cool little operator. Uh, okay, got our test cases. All of the pseudocode that we have written makes sense. The algorithm does seem to be functioning at least from like a glance. So let's run and see what we get. Looks like we should get 6 and 0. If we go ahead and run it, and we do. So let's take our now completed function back to the input window. Go ahead and paste it in there. See what the tests say. And the tests say we are correct. So. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.